have no idea what's going to end there. That's good. <laughs> That's mission accomplished. I'm yeah, very happy. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So what's in store? We're seeing some more surprises. Some more surprises for sure. Um, we really want to... Um, kind of reinvent the world a little bit. And so that's one of the things that um, that we really love about this show is the opportunity to bring a lot of, of our, we're bringing our characters with us, we're bringing a lot of the mythology with us from last season, but we also don't want to pick up exactly where we left off. We really want to kind of take the show in kind of a new and hopefully surprising direction. Um, and it was always the thought of the show, uh, even from the very beginning, to, you know, okay, first season we're going to do in the Arctic and it's this, contagion within this space and everyone a lot of people anyway were saying how do you sustain that over multiple seasons and the way you sustain it is you don't try to sustain it so we want to every season of the show if we're so fortunate we want to be able to kind of pick up and move to a new location and have keep our structure keep doing one episode per day um, but also kind of open it up and be like oh wow okay that the season is here and this is what we're doing so that's that's what we're doing and we're excited tremendously excited about it so is it going to just be one location each season, or are you going to do a wider? It, it gets a little bit wider, but we really like the thing, I think that one of the things that worked really well about last season was the claustrophobia and the feeling of we're trapped in this place for, you know, a certain number of days. And so we can go other places through various kind of structural devices, but what we really like is that sense of, crap, I'm trapped here, how do I get out, how do I survive, you know, what's happening in this place, and trying to unpack that from within. So we're definitely, we like that a lot, and we're going to do that again this year. So were you kind of chuckling to yourself when people were like, oh, it's a zombie show, it's a virus show, it's a this, it's that. And you're like, well, yes and no and yes. Also. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and, and not chuckling so much. I mean, last year it was just frustrating because it was like, it's zombies. And it's like, no, we're not zombies. We love zombies, but we're not that. Yeah. Um, but yes, we definitely had more in mind for the show. And so <laughs> it, it, it's tricky because you want to have there be a threat. But at the same time, you don't want it to look like other shows that are out there. And now there's such a proliferation of virus shows, too, that we want to be different. And we want to be able to do our own thing and tell our own stories. So um, it was a little frustrating. Uh, but at the same time, we knew we had a plan. And so it was like, just wait. Be patient. Please watch the show and, and hang in there, and you'll see. So how do you keep the core cast together for season two? I mean, in uh -huh. season one, everybody was you know, in the base. Right. And they had a reason to be together. But right. So I assume everybody's coming back? Uh, everybody is coming back to some degree. Um, and it's hard because we're trying to kind of, thank you very much, because we're trying to reinvent a little bit, um, trying to motivate how people are ending up where is a little tricky this year because some of those characters are very particular to the Arctic and to, so yes, we are going to bring back as many people as we can in different versions um, and different incarnations, but it's not the same kind of thing where we can bring everybody back in the same uh, the same station. Some, yeah, some of that. Mm -hmm. This year, um, uh, I don't want to say thematically because we have a really cool theme and a really cool kind of science that we're um, uh, circling the show around. It's going to be very different from last year, but still very much under the purview of the CDC. So what we want to do, uh, you know, in a given season is is say, oh, they also do this, and they handle those kind of cases, and oh, okay, yeah, I heard about that on the news. That's interesting. But then also add in our mythology and make you feel like at the end of season two, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. So season one was Ilaria was up to this and the Immortals and they were, you know, they had this, you know, terrible conspiracy and in season two you'd go, oh, oh, okay, now I see. I know a lot more about that now. And it doesn't feel like it's completely separate because we're not an American Horror Story, you know, type show where we're going to reinvent completely, which I think is great, but we're going to, what we want to do is reinvent, you know, 60% of the show and the rest comes with us. Um, in character arcs and in serialized storytelling. What was the thinking splitting the virus into two types? Um, we wanted the virus to do, it was tricky, we wanted the virus to do different things. And so that was really our thinking behind it, and it was tough. It was hard to sort of reconcile that and keep it all together, but we wanted it to be, the nice thing about science fiction is that you, you have the ability to kind of take things in a really strange and, you know, direction that hopefully feels a little bit truthful, but is also in a sci-fi place. So. Um, that was, it was challenging, it was tremendously challenging to kind of figure out how to reconcile both sides of the virus. Uh, but that was it. We wanted it to be really dangerous now. We wanted it to be contagious and spreadable and not just kill people and turn them into a bag of goo right off the bat. Did you consult with the CDC mm -hmm. on how to do that? We did. We did, yeah. And, and I mean, with consulting, um, what, I, what we always do, and I've done this on a lot of shows with consultants, is you, you don't say what's the most probable. You say, is this possible? 
that, you know, is it, is it, is it remotely, is there a sliver of a chance that it could be this? Because if so, we'd like to do that. And they go, well, you know, what you, what you get from a good consultant is they go, no, but if you did this instead, there is this, you know, other virus called this and it does so-and-so. Oh, okay, okay, good. We'll just we can we can feather it in and, and lean toward, lean in that direction. So now that we know about all the mortality, mm -hmm. are there going to be flashbacks to earlier? Um, very, there very well maybe. We haven't landed on on a bunch of that stuff yet, but yes, we do want to know like how this happened and um, what it all means. So there is, we, we we jumped around in time a little bit at the end of last season, and we will be time jumping again for sure, uh, both at the start of the season and then also during the season. So I mean that's the thing that we we don't do like a dedicated flashback story like a Lost, um, but we are going to be playing with time this year for sure. So you say you're going to jump in also, does that mean there's going to be a time jump between the end of last season and the start of this season? There absolutely will be, yes. Um, and that's one of the things that we wanted to to set up because um, we're not, you know, we're not a completely serialized show that picks up right where you left off. Um, we do it episode to episode, but not season to season. But then we're not a show that's going to reinvent an entire series every single time either. So the best way to do that is to take a significant time jump and then go, oh my god, this character was there and now they're here? How did that happen? And then hopefully if we're doing our job right, you understand within a couple of episodes, oh, okay, now I understand. This All, all this stuff happened between seasons, but now I get where we are and where we're going. So that's the fun of it is trying to figure out like what's the circle because I think I think people will be expecting us to start in Paris and we're not necessarily gonna do that. Now with now with Julia's character, was she and her father have a more father daughter relationship because it seems like she was resistant at first. Uh -huh. But when we left off the the final episode it seems like she's kind of embracing some of his tactics. Yeah, it, it, it very definitely does. And that's a character both, um, uh, a lot of our characters are going to be embracing new, kind of new parameters this year. Um, so yes, we are, we are definitely going to, that, that there will be another chapter in that, uh, uh, that relationship between Julia and her father, but I don't want to say too much more about that. It's cool. I really love it. How difficult is it to uh, kind of, I guess, not cast light on Dr. Hitake completely 100% as a villain, mm -hmm. you know, still give him those human sides, but still show how much of a monster that he is? Right. Oh, I, I, I thought that was one of my favorite parts of, of last season. Um, and, and this is an area where I was frustrated, uh, talking about, like, frustration with people, you know, guessing ahead, because when we started with him, he seemed like a bad, bad guy. And then I think, I hope anyway, by the end, we had humanized him to a place where you're like, I kind of like him, but I hate him, um, which I really like. And so the frustration was just hoping people would be patient and stick with the show and not just go, oh, he's, you know, I've seen that guy. He's twirling his mustache. And, you know, it's like, no, no, he's, he's awesome. Just wait, please. Be patient because you're not going to see all the colors in the first episode or two. But by the time you get to 13, you'll go, oh, I have a greater understanding of that guy. And I get it. And that's the same thing we want to do this year is somebody that you thought was a really good character has some stuff that's not so good about them. And someone you thought was, you know, new kid, we're introducing a couple new characters as well. And people that you think, oh, yeah, I, get, I know what that person's about. Hopefully by the end of the season two, you won't know what that person's about and you'll feel very conflicted about them. And, there, you know, you're talking kind of about not necessarily a misdirect, but a slow reveal. But yes. You were able to impart kind of a lot of information suddenly while you had, like, kind of holy crap moments, like mm -hmm. the Field of Frozen Monkey, right. and, you know, things yeah. like that. So how hard is it to balance that kind of stuff, and how hard is it to bring it to the center? It's really hard. I mean, that's probably the most challenging part of the job is just trying to figure out how much to reveal when, um, because... Yeah, we have a really good writing staff and everyone can write scenes and, and everyone can come up with great ideas and it's the parsing out of those ideas because there's a version that burns through story very quickly and you just have to keep, thank you, you just have to keep turning it around and then there's a version where, you know, you're going so slowly and you're just, you know, parceling things out, you know, in eyedropperfuls um, where it can get really frustrating for the audience where they're like, nothing happened this week, it was, you know, cool, I learned something new about the character but what really happened this week, not much. And that's always the, the challenge is how much and how little to, you know, how much you hold back and how much do you lay out there. And so we always want to have a big twist at the end of the show. We always want to have a big twist between acts, but we don't want to burn through so much story that it feels ridiculous. 